So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak here. It's a great pleasure for me to visit this nice place and to speak at this conference. Uh, and I'm going to speak about uh, uh, Laplacians, Hermitian and non-Hermitian Laplacians and uh, about wave equations on two-dimensional polyhedral surfaces. It's just a mathematical work. Uh, it is a joint work with uh, two PhD students from Moscow, Valeria Konova and Helena Luxon, but I hope there are some connections to physical applications. Okay, so here is the outline of the talk. First, I will speak about the uh, statement of the problem, so how to define Laplacians on two-dimensional polyhedra. Uh, and uh, then I will speak about uh, a, a little bit about the spectral properties of these Laplacians, uh, uh, namely about the space of harmonic functions, about the trace formula, and then I will pass to the wave equation and uh, describe uh, the problems which are close to the problems of the propagation of singularities, the standard propagation of singularities of waves uh, in uh, non-homogeneous media. Okay. So, uh, so I will do with uh, uh, Laplace operators uh, on two-dimensional polyhedral surfaces. So here you can see a polyhedron. By polyhedron I mean two-dimensional, orientable, compact, almost everywhere it will be compact surface, which is glued uh, from the flat polygons using just very standard rules. So the, the, the polygons are regularly glued each to, to, to each other. Uh, I will not suppose that the polyhedron is spherical. It can be non-spherical with some holes. Uh, and uh, uh, the number of vertices of this polyhedron must be, can be quite arbitrary. I will not suppose that polyhedron is embedded in three-dimensional space. It's just abstract polyhedron. Uh, the only condition is the gauss bonnet relation, which states that if we can compute the total angles, the sum of the flat angles uh, near all vertices, then this, this sum must be equal to the Euler characteristics of the corresponding surface. Okay, uh, now uh, I'm going to define the Laplace operator on such a polyhedron, and to, in order to do this, I have, to, first of all, to introduce, the, to introduce the smooth structure, the smooth coordinates on this polyhedron. And the first remark, which I would like to, to mention, is that in spite of the fact that we have a polyhedron which has edges and vertices, uh, really we deal with completely smooth surface. And moreover, we deal with complex analytic surface. Uh, it means that it is a natural complex structure on such a polyhedron. Uh, the complex structure has a very natural, uh, uh, a very natural uh, uh, form. Uh, if we consider uh, just, a point, just a point on the face, uh, then uh, uh, the point of the face is the point of two-dimensional plane, and we can introduce standard complex coordinate. If we consider the point on the edge, then we can unfold uh, this, uh, the vicinity of this point to the plane and introduce the same complex coordinate. And the only problem appears if we consider the vertex, the vertex of the polyhedron, then again we can unfold the vicinity of the vertex to the plane, but there will be not uh, the circle on the plane, but some angle. Uh, the beta is just the total angle of the, on the, o, 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 near the surface. And the complex coordinates, uh, if Z is the co standard complex coordinates on the plane, then the complex coordinate on the polyhedron near this point of vertex has the following form. Okay. So we introduce the complex analytic structure on such a polyhedron. And then in order to, uh, to define Laplacian, we have to introduce matrix. Matrix has this form. It means that in all points uh, except vertices, this matrix is just a standard flat matrix on the plane, but near the vertices it has singularities. The, the singularities of this type, here beta again is the total angle uh, near the vertex. Okay? So if we write down in coordinates the Laplacian uh, near the vertex, it will have the following form, just like the operator which appears, for example, in the wave equation, and this coefficient uh, describes the singularity in the vertex. It has the following form, if the total angle uh, if the total angle is less than 2 pi, then this coefficient vanishes in the point of in, in this vertex, and if the total angle is greater than 2 pi, then uh, this coefficient comes to infinity. Okay, uh, so uh, if we consider, for example, wave equation with such Laplacian, then this wave equation is just the model of equation of uh, which which governs uh, the uh, the behavior of waves in such a media uh, where we have uh, point obstacles. So the, the, the velocity of, of waves vanishes in some points or becomes infinite on some points. Okay. Uh, now, uh, in order to define Laplacian, first of all, we, we, we deal with the Hermitian Laplacian. 
the Kermish and Laplacians are defined by the following two natural conditions. First of all, we state that this, Lapla that this Laplacian must be Hermitian or self-adjoint. And another condition is that if we consider only the flat part of this of the surface M, then on the flat part of M, uh, this Laplacian must uh, coincide with the usual Laplacian. So the formal definition has the following form. First of all, we exclude all, this, all the vertices, and uh, then we, uh, we obtain some two-dimensional surface without any singularities, and matrix is everywhere smooth, but the, the surface is non-compact. And we consider the space of compactly supported infinite uh, differentiable functions on this M node, and uh, on this space, we consider the usual Laplacian. Then we take the closure of this Laplacian with, this, with respect to this graph norm. It's just a standard procedure. And after that, we obtain uh, some operator which is not self-adjoint, but is symmetric. And by definition, Laplace operator on the polyhedron is the self-adjoint self extension of this theta naught tilde. Uh, the point is that uh, this Laplacian is not unique. Uh, uh, practically speaking, we have to put some boundary conditions in the vertices of our, of our uh, polyhedron. And now I will describe explicitly what these boundary conditions are. The boundary conditions have the following form. Uh, near near the, the vertex, each function from the domain of the corresponding Laplacian can have singularities. Singularities have the following form. If the total angle is less than 2 pi, then the only possible singularity can be logarithmic. But, but if we have a, a, a big total angel, a, angle, then we have some singularities of the, of the uh, power type. Here R and theta are just polar coordinates near the vertex. Okay? And uh, so the asymptotics of the function has the following form, and the boundary conditions, they, uh, they connect these coefficients alpha plus and alpha minus, which appear in front of this, in front of this singular functions f. Uh, so these boundary conditions have the following form. We, we uh, collect all the coefficients alpha pluses and alpha minuses for all the vertices of our polyhedron. Uh, then we obtain two long vectors, uh, which uh, the, uh, each of them belongs to Cs. And uh, considering this uh, Cs plus Cs, the standard skew, skew Hermitian form, and then fix some Lagrangian plane in this, in this space, and the coupling condition have the following form. This vector formed by these two vectors must lie in this Lagrangian plane. Analytically, it means that we have to, to fix some unitary matrix, and uh, the boundary condition have the following form. But, uh, 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 of course, generally speaking, it's not natural to consider these general boundary conditions because they, they connect the behavior of functions in all vertices of polyhedron together. So I will suppose further that uh, the, the coupling conditions are, are local. So this Lagrangian plane is the direct sum of the Lagrangian planes which correspond to the different vertices of the polyhedron, or it, it means in another word that for each vertex we fixed uh, the unitary matrix and write down these boundary conditions for each vertex of the polyhedron separately. Okay, so this is the, the definition of, of Hermitian Laplacian. But of course, we can modify these definitions in order to obtain non Hermitian Laplacian. In this case, we simply must drop uh, for this Lagrangian plane the, the condition to be Lagrangian. It, it can be not Lagrangian. Then, or for this matrix U, it can be non unitary. Then we will have non Hermitian, non -Hermitian uh, Laplacian. And uh, 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 if uh, the vector of uh, boundary values belong to this plane L, we will have the function from the domain of delta, and if it belongs to the skew orthogonal complement, it will have the, the function from the domain of, of, of a joint operator. Okay, and here are some, exa some examples. Uh, I would like to mention that here we obtain such slightly non-Hermitian operators. Uh, they are finite dimensional extensions of symmetric operators. Okay. Now, I will speak about spectral properties of these uh, operators. And first of all, I would like to discuss the space of harmonic functions. So the first theorem is that this, if we can compute the space, consider the space of harmonic functions, then the space of harmonic functions is isomorphic to the intersection of the Lagrangian plane, which defines the operator delta, with some fixed Lagrangian plane, which, 
which is defined only by the polyhedron itself, by the complex structure on the polyhedron. And this plane L0 can be expressed in terms of classical Mitte-Kleffler problem of M, and I will recall what is it. So this M is a two-dimensional surface with a complex structure. It's a one-dimensional complex analytic manifold, a Riemannian surface, and we have a, a finite number of points on it, which are vertices of the polyhedron. Uh, and uh, 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 the Mitte-Kleffler problem has the following form. We consider these fixed points, and in each point we can set the principal part of the Laurent series for, for some differential, for some meromorphic differential. And uh, the problem is to find the meromorphic one form, the meromorphic uh, differential with the prescri prescribed uh, Laurent part of this type. Okay, and uh, the classical theorem by Mitte-Kleffler states that the problem is solvable if and only if the sum of all re residues is equal to zero. And uh, in terms of this uh, Mitte-Kleffler problem, we can describe the, the harmonic functions on the polyhedron. Here are simple examples. If we consider complex, convex polyhedron in R3 with local boundary conditions, then all the harmonic functions will have the following form. Cs are some constant, and this constants must satisfy the following system of equations. And here, thetas are coefficients which define boundary conditions in different... So, so they are elements of one by one, one-dimensional unitary matrix, okay? If uh, the, the Laplacian is non-admissional, we must replace cosine and, and sine by some arbitrary complex constants. So the rank of this linear system is just uh, defines just uh, the, the dimension of the space of the harmonic functions, okay? And uh, one simple remark, uh, as the space of harmonic functions is uh, uh, isomorphic to this intersection, then if we consider the, uh, the Laplacian in general position a little bit move our Laplacian, then the, the harmonic functions will disappear at all. So generally speaking, in general positions, there are no harmonic functions on the polyhedron. This is some other examples. And uh, now I say, will say a few words about the trace formula. So here uh, we can see the the standard McKean-Zinger formula, uh, which uh, uh, defines the trace of the, the, trace of the heat uh, operator, uh, which is defined on compact d-dimensional Riemannian smooth manifold with a smooth matrix. So the first term is the volume of the manifold, the second one is the integral of the scalar curvature, and then some integrals of the, some polynomials of the derivatives of the Riemann tensor on this manifold. Okay? Uh, for two-dimensional case, it has this simple form. Here is the area of the surface. Here is this Euler characteristics and some correction. Now for our, for our polyhedron, uh, the situation is following. If we consider the simplest Laplacian, which is the Laplacian with, with all the functions are bounded from the domain of this Laplacian, uh, then uh, this trace formula must be replaced by this one. So instead of this term, we have this term, which is just not coincides with the, with the Euler characteristics. And another point is that the correction is exponentially small. It's not of order of t. Of course, it's, it's, it is due to the fact that uh, our polyhedron is almost everywhere flat. Okay? For, general, for general Laplacian, of course, we have some more complicated formula, we have some asymptotic series, which is asymptotic in t's, and the coefficients are asymptotic series is logarithm of t. Okay. Now, I finally, I, I'm going to say a few words about the solutions of the wave equations. So, let's consider the wave equation on this polyhedron, uh, and uh, uh, I will discuss the simplest properties of, of this wave equation. First of all, if we consider the simplest case, when uh, our polyhedron is just an infinite py pyramid, this is the pyramid with only one vertex. Then we can write down more or less explicit formula for the solution of this Cauchy problem, which is just analog of the, of the, of the say, Kirchhoff or Poisson formula uh, uh, for, for standard wave equation. Uh, and uh, in order to do this, we, we, uh, uh, we uh, obtained the special integral transform, which has the following form, k naught, y naught, and g naught are just uh, Bessel functions. Uh, 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 roughly speaking, this is just some spectral decomposition of our Laplacian re written here. And in terms of this integral transform, we can write down the explicit formula for the solution, but I will skip it because it is rather huge. Okay? And uh, the second point which I would like to mention is the, 
the propagation of singularities. The propagation of singularities has the following, I mean by, by the propagation for, of singularities, the following question. Let's consider the initial conditions of delta type. I will not deal with distributions on my polyhedron. I will put here the parameter epsilon and suppose that U0 is infinite time, infinitely differentiable compactly supported function. So we have some, such delta types, delta type initial condition as epsilon 10 to zero. And uh, instead of the support of the singularities, I will define the asymptotic support of the solution, which is just uh, set on our polyhedron when the solution is, is not of square of epsilon or for the square of epsilon, which is non-vanishing. Okay. Then uh, for small t's, this it is the, just the front of our the front of our uh, solution. For small t's, is just a circle, and for large t's, uh, it uh, for a pyramid, it is the union of two sets. The first is formed by the endpoints of geodesic starting from the initial from the support of the initial condition, and the second one is formed by the endpoints of geodesic starting from the vertex. Okay, this is. Uh, the structure of the the structure of the this is the the initial wave and this is just the reflected wave the front of the initial wave and the front of the reflected wave and we all also can deal with the statistic of reflective of reflected weight I will just skip the skip the, uh, the 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 rigorous theorems only show the slides that uh, the uh, I will only mention that the statistics of the number of the reflected waves is governed by the uh, geometrical properties of geodesics of, uh, on our polyhedron, namely by the number m, which is the maximal number point of geodesics connecting pairs of vertices, such that the lengths of geodesics are at most t. So, okay. Thank you. That's all. There is time for questions, please. Yeah, suppose if you have a situation in which, you know, you deal with Laplace's equation with uh, you know, the Neumann kind of conditions uh, are the word and uh, over a polyhedron, uh, you know, you have to specify some derivative of potential over polyhedron. Would that pose any problem in particular or is that zero major set or it won't matter much? You know, in our case, the polyhedron is without boundary. So oh, we have okay. just a compact, the, the closed compact polyhedron. We have only vertices, and we put boundary conditions only on the vertices. There is no boundary, so no, no Neumann condition. Okay, that would not be a problem. Thank you. Can you arrange your polyhedron or Riemann surface such that you uh, achieve uh, focusing of your uh, geodesics of the of the waves, it starts from a delta-like. Sure, uh, sure. We have focus and, and even the in the time case. And the yes, even in the case of the pyramid, because it is isometric to a cone, and for a cone we have uh, self-intersecting geodesics, so we have their focusing. Yes. The speaker again, and. Uh, <laughs>